So once your piece has been stitched out, you're going to go ahead and remove the basting stitch. For this, I'll just take a quick unpick or a seam ripper and I'll just unpick those stitches. It goes really, really fast. So now that my basting stitches are done, I'm going to go ahead and cut my piece out of the stabilizer. To do this, just fold your fabric back and with a rotary cutter, just cut along the batting edge. When you do this, be careful you don't cut your fabric. And there we have it. Your piece is now cut out of the stabilizer and the, ba and the basing stitches have been removed. You're going to do this with all of your pieces. So that's all my pieces done and I'm ready to go to the machine to start putting them together. We're going to start with the disappearing pinwheel. It should look something like this. It is a standard nine patch square. So to join these pieces, you're going to stitch them in strips of three, and then you're going to join them. From there, you're going to add on your flying geese edgings. So you're going to start with your disappearing pinwheel square first, then you're going to join your flying geese pieces together, and then you're going to join them to a disappearing pinwheel panel. You'll be doing all the sewing with a quarter inch sewing foot. I like to lay my pieces before I start sewing, just to make sure I've got everything in the correct order. When joining your pieces together, just match those edges up and then you can sew them. Just match them very nicely along the edges and you can sew them together. If they move, just nudge them before you start sewing. And there's my strip done. I'm going to go ahead and stitch the rest of the pieces in the same way. I'm going to go ahead and stitch my three flying geese panel to my four flying geese panel. Again, just check your seams so that they nest properly when you sew them together. I'm stitching the three panel to the bottom of the four panel and I'm just going to nest the middle seams so I don't sit with any bulk. Match up your edges, that middle seam, and the final outer edge. And there's my nice flying geese panel. I'm going to go and do the rest of them and uh, I'll be back in a minute. I've stitched all my strips together and I'm going to give them a quick press. So when it comes to putting your pieces together and to press the seams, you want to be sure that the seams go in opposite directions to each other. So for this strip, I want the seams to go to the outside. For the middle strip, I'm going to make it so the seams come to the inside. And for the other outer strip, 
I'm going to make sure that the seams go to the outside. You don't want the seams on top of each other, otherwise it's going to create unnecessary bulk in your seams. At the same time, just give your flying geese panels a quick press as well. You want these seams to lie flat. Once again, I'm just going to match my edges and make sure my seams are nicely nested and I'm good to sew. If you find that your seams don't always match 100%, you can give your fabric a gentle tug to make sure it eases in nicely. Your fabric has been cut on the bias, so you've got a little bit of extra playroom just to get those seams to match nicely. Now to stitch on the other panel and then the two flying geese panels, one this side and one on the other side. And that's my quilted panel for the tote completed. The flying geese panel, the disappearing pinwheel panel and of course the secondary flying geese panel. So I've gone ahead and stitched my second panel and I've pressed the seams at the back. I'm now ready to complete my tote. To make up the tops and the bottoms of the panels, cut four strips 17 inches long from a jelly roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. These strips are going to go at the top and at the bottom of each of these panels. So it'll go on top and also at the bottom. You'll do this for both panels. Okay so I've gone ahead and sewn on my borders in the top and the bottom. I'm just going to give this a quick press. And I'm going to do the same with the second panel. As you can see, I have a few pieces of fabric sticking out and I'm going to cut those off shortly. As you can see, I have some fabric peeking out over these edges and I'm going to go ahead and just quickly trim them back. I'm going to do the same with the second panel. It just makes it easier for when you want to put the pieces together, then you don't have all funny uneven edges. Okay, so you now have your two panels and we are going to sew them along the bottom section. So put your two panels together, right sides facing, this is the top section and this is going to make up the base of your bag and you're going to come along and sew along this bottom section. Right, so both my panels are now stitched together and I've pressed the seam flat. Next we're going to go, turn this over to the wrong side and we're going to add some iron-on pelon. 
I have some very thin iron-on pelon over here and as you'll notice it has a rough textured side and this is a side that has the glue on. This is a side that's going to face the wrong side of your quilted panel. I now need to cut out a piece of iron-on pelon the same size as my quilted tote. I'm taking this to iron and I'm going to go iron on the pelon. Okay, so I've now gone ahead and added on my pelon and I'm just going to neaten up these edges and remove off any excess pelon that's not needed. Next, we're going to go and make the handles for this lovely tote. For the handles, you're going to cut four strips that are 14 inches long from a jelly roll. And I'll go ahead and cut out the last piece now. Take two of your handle strips and cut out two pieces of pelon for those handle strips. You're going to iron the pelon to each of these handle strips. Remember the rough side is the side with the glue and that goes onto the wrong side of your handle pieces. My pelon is on and I'm going to go ahead and neaten up these edges from any excess pelon before we put our handles together. You're going to place your other fabric strips onto each of these handle strips, right sides together, and you're going to sew a quarter inch seam along this edge and that edge. We're then going to turn these handles right side out. So I've now turned my handles right side out and I've pressed them. I'm going to go and do a little bit of top stitching along the sides of each of these handles, just for that finish of a decorative edge. Now that my handles are done, I like to baste them in place so they don't move when it comes to finishing up the bag. So I'm going to use this middle panel as a guide and I'm going to place the one edge over there and I'm going to fold over and bring it in to match. I'm going to now baste along the top side over here and over there. I'm going to do the same on the other side of the bag. I'm going to match the handles up according to the middle panel, top stitch here, and uh, I'm just going to baste it on the other handle over there too. I have basted my handles in place, and I have used a 1 8 of an inch seam when I did the basting of the handles. We're almost done with this bag, and our next step is to actually cut out the lining. So I'm going to take a piece of lining fabric, and I'm going to cut it the same size as my tote. When cutting out your lining, make sure your handles are inside on your inside of your tote. You don't want to cut them off accidentally and you don't want to nick the fabric. That is now my lining cut, and I'm now ready for the next step. 
Let's finish the tote outer and then do the lining. To finish the tote outer, fold your tote in half. Match up the seams and sew along this edge and this edge. Now that I've sewn the seams on the sides of the tote, I want to make a box effect for the base. To do this, just take your base piece and pull it. Match up the side seam with the base. You're then going to sew along here. I'm going to use the base stitching as a guide where to sew. I have stitched in about one and a half inches from the point. This excess fabric you can go ahead and cut off, leaving a quarter inch seam from your stitching line. I've done both sides of the bag and this is going to give your tote a lovely base with a nice square edge. You can see the bottom of your tote is already looking nice and squared off. Now for the lining of your tote. Take your lining and fold it so the right sides of your lining are together. The fold is at the bottom and you've got an open edge at the top. You're then going to sew a quarter inch from the top down to this folded edge. And you're going to do the same on the other side. But when you do this, you want to leave at least a 6 inch gap in the side seam so you can turn your tote around right side through this opening. Without this opening, you will not be able to turn your tote around. Now that my side seams are done, I'm going to go ahead and square off the base in the same way as I did the tote outer. Just pull the corners of the base, like so, and go ahead and make a one and a half inch stitching line from this point. You can either just eyeball it or you can measure it. It's entirely up to you what you're most comfortable doing. Now that I've stitched the squared up section for the base, I'm just going to clip back that fabric. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. That is the lining for your tote bag done. We're now going to put the lining and your tote and we're going to finish up. Turn your lining right side out. Place your lining to the inside of your tote. Right side of fabrics match. I always find it easiest to match up the seams first when I do this. Make sure the handles are to inside between your outer tote and your lining. Sew the lining to the tote outer along the top section of the bag. The lining is now stitched to the tote and you can turn your tote right side up through the lining. And there's your tote done. All that's left is to take and close that opening in the seam. And I'm going to do a little bit of top stitching along the top edge of this bag to hold the lining nicely in place. <laughs> 